My name is Pavel Heben. I am with the National Research Council of Canada. This short webinar is about sub-wavelength silicon photonics. I should say it's just a brief kind of intuitive introduction to help you grasp the basic concepts. So why silicon photonics should go sub-wavelength? Let's first take a few steps back to silicon microelectronics. In 1957, the first electronic silicon chip was invented at Fairchild Semiconductor. Soon after, Gordon Moore, a co-founder of Intel, predicted that the number of transistors on a chip would double every two years. Intel's first chip in 1969 had 1,200 transistors. Since then, the number of transistors doubled every two years. The latest Intel chips have an incredible 5 billion transistors and today no one is sure for how long this miniaturization race can continue. New ways forward are being explored. A promising solution is to supplement the chip electronics with photonic functions. But what does this miniaturization imply for photonics? Dimensions of photonic structures are becoming significantly smaller than the wavelength of light. This brings us to the realm of so-called sub-wavelength optics. Let's try to visualize this. Consider the well-known compact disk. Information is encoded here by means of small dots spaced at a pitch of about a micrometer that is larger than the wavelength of visible light. When we shine white light on the CD, a color spectrum is observed. Different wavelengths are diffracted under different angles. The angles can easily be calculated from the grading equation, which is written here in its simplest form, that is for direction of illumination perpendicular to the grating surface. However, if the dots are densely spaced so the typical distances become smaller than the wavelength of light, then such structure operates in the sub-wavelength regime. The factor on the right side of the grading equation, m times wavelength divided by pitch, becomes larger than 1 so that no real diffraction orders exist except for m equals 0, which corresponds to the reflected or refracted light. Diffraction is frustrated, no color spectrum is observed, and white light upon a reflection remains white, just like upon a reflection from the mirror. Of course, this is a well-known phenomenon in optics. The principle was first exploited by Heinrich Hertz when working with the radio waves at the end of the 19th century. Hertz used a fine grid of metal wires with sub pitch as a polarizer. Today, sub structures are widely used in optics, for example in polarization or anti-reflection optics. Mother Nature has also perfectly mastered the technology. Some night-flying moths have eyes with cornea covered with a sub array of microscopic pyramids, which act as an anti-reflection coating. Residual reflection of light at night from the eyes, which could reveal the butterfly to its predators, is suppressed and the night moth becomes invisible to its enemies. In 2010, we developed at the NRC Canada the first sub wavelength optical waveguide. The waveguide consists of an array of about 150 nanometer long silicon segments, as we see in this image from the scanning electron microscope. It is interesting that if these segments were, let's say, twice as long, the light of wavelength about 1.55 micrometers would not be allowed to propagate forward. It would be reflected back and such waveguide would behave as a black mirror. However, in our sub wavelength waveguide, light efficiently propagates forward as if the waveguide was perfectly continuous. In other words, as if we fused all the segments together into a continuous, uninterrupted line. The light propagates in such a waveguide in the form of so-called flocket block mode, kind of hopping from one segment to another. Yes, it is the same principle well known in solid state physics as in the propagation of electrons in crystals. Strangely enough, even some leading scientists in the field were initially very skeptical about this sub waveguide. For example, one of the reviewers in a journal with the highest prestige was of the opinion that such segmented waveguide cannot work as predicted 
and rejected the paper. Since then, it has been shown that similar doubts were unfounded. Many new sub babylon waveguide structures have been developed, not only at the NRC Canada, where the idea was born. Today, several research groups worldwide are effectively exploring sub babelan grating structures in silicon waveguides for different applications. Let's now look at one practical application. How to get light from the optical fiber into tiny silicon photonic circuits? The problem is that the cross-section of a typical silicon waveguide is a few hundred times smaller than the cross-section of the optical fiber core. In practice, this means that if we just directly attach the fiber to the silicon waveguide, less than 1% of light would get coupled into the waveguide and the remaining over 99% would get lost to the surrounding environment. With such low coupling efficiency, silicon waveguides would indeed be of little practical use. Therefore, development of efficient fiber chip coupler is a hot topic in silicon photonics. At the NRC Canada, we have developed a highly efficient fiber chip coupler exploiting the idea of the sub wavelength grading waveguide. The principle of operation is that the size of the silicon segment is gradually decreasing towards the chip edge where the optical fiber is placed. This causes a gradual expansion of mod size along the coupler towards the chip edge until a spot size is reached which is similar to the optical fiber mode. The coupler's length is about 50 microns, here we see it under an electron microscope. Light gradually expands towards the coupler and facing the optical fiber. We measured a dramatic increase in coupling efficiency between the optical fiber and a silicon chip, with a record efficiency of over 90% and low polarization dependent loss. Professor Ijić Tiroki from the Academy of Sciences of the Czech Republic precisely estimated fundamental limits of performance of this coupler using his unique 3D Fourier domain simulator. The calculated results are shown here. We see the flocket block mode pulsating along different sub wavelength segments. The theoretical efficiency limit is amazingly high, more than 99%, that is less than 0.05 dB. I would like to show you a few more exciting examples of the use of sub wavelength structures in silicon waveguides, just very briefly. Waveguide crossings, where we have reached a record low loss of less than 0.02 dB. Surface grading couplers, where sub wavelength nanostructure is used to optimize coupling strength and for grading apodization to achieve maximum mode overlap with optical fiber, which is positioned vertically above the chip. In one of these couplers, which we developed in collaboration with University of Zilina in the Slovak Republic and University of Malaga in Spain, we recently measured the coupling efficiency of 0.8 dB. Here is a temperature insensitive waveguide invented by my colleague Ian Schmidt at the NRC Canada, with the temperature dependence reduced by two orders of magnitude compared to conventional silicon waveguides. Here we can see a sub wavelength anti reflective waveguide facet which is formed directly at the chip edge, similar to the anti reflective mod I structure which we have seen on the previous slide. A new type of ultra-compact WDM multiplexer with a size of only 100 by 160 micrometers and an ultra-fast optical switch with a speed of 1 terabit per second, which we developed in collaboration with Professor Ivan Glask at University of Strathclyde. Here you can see some multimode interference couplers developed at the University of Malaga, where sub wavelength structures were exploited to achieve a very compact design and an ultra-wide wavelength range from 1260 to 1680 nanometers, that is a bandwidth exceeding 400 nanometers. And finally, this is an example of a sub wavelength silicon waveguide that can operate over a wide infrared range, in principle from 2 to 8 micrometers, recently developed by the group of Professor Goran Masanovic at the University of Southampton. I would say the message to take home from this short webinar is that sub wavelength structures offer exciting new practical solutions for integrated optics. 
The key point is that the effective refractive index can be chosen from a broad range of values by lithographic patterning using just two materials, for example, silicon and silicon dioxide. Many interesting sub engineer devices have already been demonstrated and more are expected to come. I encourage you to design one of your own. It's lots of fun.